Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. On today's episode, we talk about the proven playbook to take your company to eight figures and what it takes to get there. Joining me on the show is Leonardo Caracas. He is the managing partner at jumpventures.co. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about growth. Now growth is a big topic in every company, every merchant out there wants to have his company growing. But with growth, there come different challenges along the way. So it's a difference between you grow from 100,000 to a million, from a million to 10 million. Different challenges come up along the way. And we want to dive a little bit deeper into this. So with me on the show today, I have Leonardo Caracas. He's partner at Jump Ventures at jumpventures.co. And they have developed a proven playbook to take your company up to eight figures. I want to dive a little bit more into this and Leonardo is an entrepreneur who has structured and scaled over 50 companies worldwide in the e-commerce space. He's now a partner at Jump Ventures and looking for ambitious entrepreneurs to take them to the next level. So let's welcome Leonardo to the show. Hey, Leonardo, how are you today? Hi, all good, all good, Klaus. Good to be here. Leonardo, growing a small company into a medium-sized company, into a big company has different challenges. And we want to talk a little bit deeper or go a little bit deeper into this topic. Just give me an overview. What kind of areas within a company are affected when it comes to growth? Yeah, of course, uh, when, in our scope in Jump, we are always trying to think of how to grow a use case, which is an e-commerce company, mm -hmm. um, all the way to eight figures. And usually these companies are within the six figures. Uh, so they have a very minimal infrastructure. And uh, once you get to this uh, growth, which if we want to simplify is going from 1 million to 10 million, um, the biggest uh, problems that arise are, of course, supply chain and how you can uh, continuously uh, cope with the growth that you are that you're having. The financing side, is how are you going to finance this growth? And of course, which are the skills and, and, and team uh, structure that you need to actually fulfill this growth? Yeah. So these are the, I think, the three big uh, problems entrepreneurs face when they are trying to grow from one to ten. Mm -hmm. How can I define these different um, challenges within a, a plan? Do you have specific KPIs or what do I need to look at um, to find out where I really struggle to make my business grow? Yeah, so one of the things that we really try to focus is understanding how scalable a company actually is. So I don't think every business can go from 1 to 10, and I don't think every business can, can go from 10 to 50 or 50 to 100. So there are different use cases. There are different companies that have a potential to actually scale, scale exponentially, scale uh, gradually over time. But we look at four KPIs to um, measure the health of the business and see that, we've, that we want to work with them in the future to try to scale them. The first one is trying to understand if there's a brand and a product market fit. And this comes in reviews. So basically, when you look at the reviews, uh, review rating, uh, and a star review rating from, from 0 to 5, you have something that is around 4.7, 4.6 you basically have achieved a sort of product market fit. You have enough feedback to say people love the product, love the experience, and you are your basis is ready to try to scale. Yeah? If you do it beforehand, it's going to go back and forth and you're going to have a lot of pain. So first and foremost, we look at uh, reviews. Um, second, we try to understand what is your repurchase rate. So if a company has around 30% repurchase rate, so 30% of their um, revenues is actually coming from repurchases, it means that the company has somehow a portfolio that can uh, be reused for a second, third, fourth time uh, um, purchase from, from, from customers. And there is a path to continuously grow the profitability of the company as you actually grow the, the scale of it. Yeah. The third, um, the third KPI is the AOV. So nowadays we try to find companies that have a, an AOV that has potential to go up to 75 uh, US dollars or euros. Yeah. So even if companies are nowadays not at that range, if they are 15, 30, 40, we try to see if their portfolio and the way that they are um, basically situated in the marketplace they are able to come up with SQs or able to come up with uh, bundles and products that can take this AOV all the way up to 75. Why do we need that? Uh, in the landscape of paid advertisement nowadays, 
is continuously uh, uh, is increasingly difficult to have a profitable um, purchase from customers if you don't have the right AOV. Yeah, just the costs just keep getting up and up for for Meta, or TikTok and etc. So you need to be uh, well situated in the AOV side. And the fourth and last one is the conversion rate. So the conversion rate is a thermometer to kind of uh, uh, measure if you have a uh, current operation that once you start pumping a lot of new traffic, a lot of uh, tests into the website, you're still able to maintain a certain level of uh, performance. Yeah. So nowadays, we the, it depends from context to context. So if you just acquire organic traffic, you have a very high conversion rate. If you already do a little bit of paid media, uh, your conversion rate might be uh, way lower than it was in the early stages. But when we see that a company is in the six figures and they have a conversion rate of 3% and above, it means that they have space to acquire a lot of traffic and still be in a comfortable position uh, um, in terms of uh, conversion rates. Mm -hmm. I want to go a little bit deeper into these different areas. Um, obviously, we have marketing, then we have conversion rate optimization, which is a mix between psychology and technology and to get this right. And then we have the part of um, the back end, the back office on how to grow, how to have stock. What are the areas where merchants that come to you, you see, have struggled the most with? Is it marketing? Is it operations? Where's the biggest issue? The biggest issue is definitely on marketing. So what we, the use case for us is getting uh, founders, a founding team, uh, a company that uh, has figured out a product market fit. So they really understand the product, the customer and the experience, but they really struggle uh, thinking about how to grow uh, this uh, user base, how to go uh, their, their plans for, for multi-channel growth, how to create content, how to create merchandising, how to create offers, bundles, so on and so forth. So the biggest struggle we see and the one that is very complementary to our skills is founders or, or, or a company that uh, really has a big focus on the brand and the product but is really, uh, um, yeah, has a lack of skills on trying to, to grow the company. Mm -hmm. You talked to me about a case study or a, um, a project that you were working on that you have grown massively. Um, give me a bit of an example on how, a real life example on how it works. Yeah, so last year we had a case study, uh, one of the companies that we accelerated. Uh, they were exactly um, at this, uh, due to NDA, I cannot say the, the name specifically, but they were exactly with, within the time, uh, within the, the, the frames that I, that I posed to you on in terms of KPIs. They were making roughly uh, $1 million of revenues in 2021. And in 2022, we finished with almost 20 million uh, US dollars. So it was a stellar growth in a one year time. Uh, they really had a good uh, product feedback. They had a uh, AOV that was in the low range, $35, and we took it all the way to $70. Um, they had a repurchase rate that had a lot of potential to grow if we work on the right channels for repurchase, like email, SMS, uh, Messenger, so on and so forth. Um, and their conversion rate was really at a great level. So when we look at the company, we saw this has potential to grow, but we need to really think about how, what are the channels we can grow them? How can we create a content machine to uh, acquire customers at a fast pace? How can we think about their merchandising? So pricing of the products, bundling of products, offers for, for, for new, uh, for leads and for returning customers. And little by little, uh, work on the different KPIs and, and maintain the sustainability throughout the growth. And yeah, as I, as I, as I mentioned, we, we, it was almost a 20 X, a uh, 20 X growth in one year. Um, and this was just supported by thinking about the growth channels, the content strategy, the merchandising strategy, and, uh, the tech and, and data stack we had, uh, for the company. Mm -hmm. You talked about the product market fit. Now we are sort of in a um, recession, inflation, all of these topics are coming up. Do you see specific verticals or specific industries where growth is still a huge um, opportunity for uh, merchants? Yeah, so for, we are very uh, industry agnostic uh, with our playbook. So 
We don't really care if it's a sporting uh, uh, um, sporting brand or a arts and craft brand or a medicinal brand. Uh, we see that there's opportunities in all the, the verticals. But um, what we definitely see is a lot of entrepreneurs creating brands that don't have any differentiation or don't solve any problem. So it's very easy to spot uh, when you are trying to understand from the entrepreneur, okay, what really differentiates your company from the market? How can people not copy you? Uh, or if someone who has a, a much bigger budget than you do cannot copy you in a matter of two to three months, how can you clearly show that you're solving a problem and that uh, customers are, are delighted by it? So this is, this is more or less where we try to differentiate uh, um, how a company can grow and a company that will struggle excessively if they try to, to get to a to eight-figure kind of, of level, right? So if we look at the feedback, we can clearly see uh, nowadays and reading throughout the qualitative feedback of customers, if they are solving a problem, if there's a good value for money, um, if they have a, something that they could not find in the competition and that's why they bought this product, if they see a clear uh, um, use for a repurchase on a on a frequent basis. So this can all be taken from the feedback, but it goes back to these two points. Is your product differentiated or does your product solve uh, an actual problem? If you have one of those ingredients, then you have something to, to work on. And that's really for us industry agnostic. It's, it really doesn't matter. Okay. Now, Give me an idea on how Jump, Jump Ventures works with a client when they come to you. Obviously, there will be a, I don't know, a small team um, going into these um, roadblocks that they can't grow any further. Now they approach you. What What's the first step? Yes. So basically, we have a, a three-step uh, um, approach with companies. Uh, how we actually started Jump Ventures it was a... Uh, pleasure project for me. Uh, I got to, to a stage where we we have grown had grown our own e-commerce a company called GoCase, and we took this bootstrap to a to a very high level uh, in terms of revenues. And I was looking for a new challenge and a new way to to think about uh, business. Yeah, and then I got a lot of coaching and mentoring throughout my my years uh, growing GoCase, and I thought, okay, it's time for me to give back and do the same to other entrepreneurs. So as a pleasure project, I started doing pro bono mentoring and coaching to uh, companies to see if I could just scale them with the knowledge, uh, tools, and, and network uh, I had acquired uh, throughout the years. So it is with this same approach that we continue to, to build a funnel within Jump, which we have basically three, um, uh, three steps. The first step is uh, we entrepreneurs get in contact with us constantly via our website and uh, fill in an intake form where we evaluate if we can help them with our knowledge, with uh, the things that we think would be replicable and with the current status of their, of their figures. Yeah. And we go through a mentoring uh, session. So we, we tackle topics that they have as pain points, obstacles and, and objectives that they, that they might want to reach. So we do mentoring sessions that might take three, four, five uh, uh, one-off mentoring sessions, yeah? If we believe that after having a good um, um, relationship over those sessions, we believe that the business has a scalability and we believe the founder or founding team really has uh, the right uh, mentality, work ethic, and, and is really synced with us, we, we think let's do a coaching program a structured coaching program of uh, every six months where we really try to scale your company by actively uh, uh, coaching in different areas and, and trying to see if you're able to execute. Yeah. So these first two steps are basically a pro bono uh, approach from us to uh, understand, get to know uh, new businesses and new founders and see if they have a business that can be scalable and they have a high match with us. Once this is actually validated and we pass through this coaching program and we believe this business is highly scalable, we love working with the founders, we see a long-term partnership, then we actively invest, we have different stock option deals and, and revenue share deals. And this is when we financially get into the, into the, into the company and yeah, try to scale them. Uh, our first objective is always 10x the company in one year. Okay, let's talk about, about the financial structure of companies. Um, 
are there situations where you need to completely change the financial setup of a company, not only going into money, but maybe the company setup, or do you just take what comes in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, this is one of the things we analyze first with the entrepreneurs is trying to understand how does their PL look like? How does their cash flow look like? Because we have a very clear picture of what a great PL should look like from an e-commerce business, yeah? So we understand uh, what is a, a good gross margin. We understand what we can do with a good gross margin. We understand what should be a, a target for MER, uh, for ad spend. We understand what should be a, a, a limit for your logistics costs, for your payroll costs. And uh, overall, try to have a company that is highly profitable. So the first thing we do is try to analyze the p &L together with the entrepreneur see where is the fat, where is the areas that you can really optimize and how can you view your business differently? Sometimes um, they just struggle to see that um, they can change the game by changing pricing of their product or change the offering that they are doing in terms of bundling. And this could completely change their, their gross margin uh, structure. So we definitely is one of the first things we do is look at their financial and see how we can optimize and, and guide them to make the changes. Because if you don't have a, a, a proper uh, um, uh, profitable structure, you won't, be, you, you won't be able to scale anyways. Mm -hmm. Now we touched on coaching, mentoring, financial um, structure and help there. A lot of merchants come to um, or have questions about finding the right partners. It might be a marketing agency that might be a software developer um, for tech and whatsoever. Do you have a network that you supply them with or how does that work? Yeah, so basically throughout the, the eight years that we were growing Go Case, we have gone through the same pain. We had to try to find freelancers, uh, people to work internally with us, agencies and so forth. So we have gone through a due diligence of finding the, the right agencies, the right freelancers and the right people to work with us. So nowadays we have a mix of uh, people that work for Jump and actively accelerate, execute the growth of the companies that we are uh, um, inside. We also have agencies and freelancers that we bring in the business or propose for the company to, to hire for, for certain tasks. And um, yeah, we have a, a selected few uh, that we really like to work with and we believe that they are good to be referred. So there's nothing better than a, than a good referral, right? So we use our network to, to try to get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Who's your perfect customer when it comes to um, become a, a customer of Jump Ventures? The perfect customer, as I mentioned previously, is that founder who is really passionate about the product, the brand, and the experience. Yeah, uh, and they believe they had found product market fit. They believe they have something different in the market. They believe that they might solve a problem that no one is is trying to solve. But they are really, um, yeah, they don't have the experience or the knowledge to take on the, the the growth side. So they don't know how to do Facebook advertisement. They don't know how to do email uh, uh, planning and campaigns. They don't know how to create unique content. They don't know how to think about product uh, development in a portfolio kind of way, not just develop products, but how to develop a portfolio and a merchandising. So they really don't have the playbook to grow a brand online, but they really are passionate about what they created and how they created and and how they 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 talk to customers about it. So this is the the uh, where we have the biggest synergies. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about going international. Uh, most of your clients are in a local market and want to go international, or are they already internationally selling? How does that work? So we have a mix of uh, of companies that are based in in the US or based in Europe. Uh, when we talk about European companies, uh, one of the first things you have to consider is already go international because the markets are quite small and they might, might be saturated fast. So you can really think about uh, uh, going to, to the markets where uh, you are very close by and you can ensure a good experience of delivery so on and so forth. For companies that are in the US, uh, until they cap out the US market, it's, a, it's still a, little, a, a big uh, uh, time frame. So we first try to understand how we can scale as maximum as possible in the US, then cap out and think about international markets. 
for European companies, we think about, okay, saturation is going to come. How can we plan for it? How can we plan and test new markets that this product might be a fit for? So internationalization is always one of the last steps we do with any uh, scaling. Uh, sometimes it has to be very early because of the, the size of the home market, but we definitely it's definitely on our playbook on how to do it. Now we our listeners are e-commerce merchants. Are you focusing on spe specific platforms like Shopify or are you um, on other platforms as well? Yeah, so we really like to, we have built our our first company, GoCase, on a custom platform. Uh, we learned a lot with it, but it was very painful. So we don't want to replicate that. We love uh, the easiness that Shopify brings to uh, build a business to integrate apps, to uh, yeah, have a whole ecosystem that supports it. So when we talk about the platform, we're really uh, thrilled to work with companies that are on Shopify already. And if they are not, we try to have a plan to transition them to it. Okay, sounds like a good plan. What kind of homework does a merchant or an entrepreneur need to do before they approach you? They really have to get their, their figures right uh, and understand uh, and present to us what is their what is their financials, their their case, what, uh, what type of um, market they are trying to approach and how do they view that their product is different. So this is what we're trying to look uh, um, in companies and in founders that are really passionate about the story that they want to tell us, but they also have done their homework and understanding to a very good level of detail how they are currently operating yeah so um if they want to 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 reach out we would love to talk to to other entrepreneurs and understand uh how to help them grow and we get a lot of energy from this so this is why we still do it as a pro bono way to mentor and coach them as well uh but we in in return we ask for very committed founders on, on trying to get the best out of our time mm -hmm. Now, when you go into the partnership as, as a venture partner, um, when you touch a little bit on it, can you give me an example about the pricing structure? So what kind of, I don't know, shares or dividends, or I don't know what how it works, um, do I need to think about as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so we usually think about how can we become long-term partners? So how can we actually have stock options uh, in a minority uh, shareholding at first? So we think about something around 20% uh, and how can we achieve targets to unleash those stock options of 20%. So we, of course, make uh, contracts and commitments to say this is what we plan to do. And if we hit those plans, we will be uh, untapping uh, potential stocks of up to 20% at first. But case by case, depending on the on the on the um, on the type of operation, on the potential of the operation, we might as well come as a majority shareholder and buy uh, more than fifty percent of shares. But our usual case is really thinking how can we uh, be first a minority shareholder that supports their growth and uh, and let the founders uh, operate the company, yeah, while we operate their growth. Okay. Give me a bit of an idea about the timeline. How long does it take from getting in touch with you guys before really um, the growth kicks in? Until the growth kicks in, that's a good one. Um, we start definitely uh, having mentoring and coaching sessions. Yeah. So the first things we try to do, and that takes around one to two months, is just getting the basis right, understanding the company, understanding which assets do they have in hands, and trying to gear that up for a possi uh, possible scale and making small tests. Okay, if we change the pricing here, if we have this type of offer, if we have this type of bundle, if we if we start creating this type of content, let's push that out there and see what is the feedback we get from, from potential clients, yeah? So in one to two months, we try to get uh, uh, that feedback. And in the third month, we're already trying to push a lot for scale. That depends, of course, if we are accelerating them. Uh, but um, if they're just getting coached, it will highly depend on the execution of the, of the founders, how they are really going crazy on trying to implement the changes that we're propo proposing. Because at this point in time, we're just doing coaching. We're not really uh, pressing buttons. Uh, and it really depends on uh, how eager and hungry they are to, to grow. So um, in the coaching period, we can definitely see uh, a lot of impact within two months, uh, but really feasible impact within three. And when we're accelerating companies, uh, it takes uh, one to two months to already see 
uh, a good impact. The the last company we we started uh, uh, growing, it grew five x in two months. So it's it's really uh, it's really depends if we have the base right as well, if we are ready for scale. Okay, yeah, that shows you the impact of a good coach or a good partner that has the experience that went through the whole growth process and can implement that into a new company. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, so if they would like to get in touch and understand a little bit how we work and, and meet us personally uh, to be evaluated for, for mentoring and for coaching, um, they can just reach out to us at uh, jumpventures.co, so jumpventures.co. Um, they can also reach out to me on LinkedIn if you want to, to, to have another channel to, in case something goes wrong with the intake form, but please just try to fill in the intake form and we will try to get back as soon as possible with, uh, with a date to, to meet you for our introduction. Excellent. Leonardo, I will put the links in the show notes as always. And to our listeners and viewers on YouTube, if you're at a point where you think about massive growth and you have the product market fit, then reach out to um, jumpventures.co. And I'm sure that you will have a good partner there to grow your company to the next level. Thanks so much for the call today. Thanks, Klaus. Thanks for the, for the talk and uh, for everyone out there. Happy sales. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.